feeling kind of cute, huh? How are you? If I can get off at noon on next Saturday, we'll go out to Wansi and have a swim. Would you like that? Oh, I'd love it. Mama? Why, it's about time. That's what you always say, Mrs. Gerhardt. Because you always are, Tony. Do you realize it's nearly midnight? Your clock must need fixing. It's just 10.30. So good, Mama. I'll be up in just one minute. Good night, Mrs. Gerhard. Good night, honey. Good night. Will you call me? I will. Bye. Ach, Mama, ich bin doch kein Kind mehr. Warum musst du mich immer rufen? Ich komme doch von alleine. Wie soll ich blamieren hier? Hey, Ami. Yeah? Oh, yeah, bitte. There's a telephone message for you, Mr. Leatherby. Uh, he's got to go home right away. Mrs. Leatherby's sick. Thanks. You guys go ahead. Who called? Uh, the doctor. I think the operator said to tell you he was there already.
Secretary of the Army has asked me to inform you that your son, Corporal John Leatherby, at How is she? I've given her a sedative. She'll be asleep soon, but I think I'd better stay here for a while anyway. I wish you wouldn't go in there, Mr. Leatherby. We'll get him back, all right, darling. Don't you worry. This is not Joe Doak's son this time. Forget we've got some pretty powerful friends. Fletcher, get me on a plane for Washington around 6, 6.30 tonight. If there's any argument, call the manager, tell him who it's for. Yeah, that's right. Now give me the senator, person to person. Come back at 11. Yes, sir. She's our last chance. She can't dig up something and that boy were really in a box. What are those? More cablegrams about him from the commanding general's office. What is it this time? Congressmen or senators? Two senators, another governor. How many does that make all together? Three governors, seven senators, 15 congressmen. Man seems to have some very powerful association. Colonel Van Dyke's office. Colonel Van Dyke. He's right here, Frau Hoffmeyer. Hoffmeyer. How are you, kid? Fine, thank you, Steve. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, that's all right. Listen, are you in the clear? I think so. It's a public phone. All right, then. It's about this Leatherby boy. What do you hear? Nothing so far. Only what's in the newspapers. Well, you know what we're up against, don't you? No, I don't. It's that old we-don't-know-nothing routine again. Nobody over there ever heard of Corporal Leatherby. You think you can find out something about that? I can try. You don't mind? Of course not. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to, you know. You're still in there pitching, huh? If you mean what I think you mean, yes. Okay, then. But don't take too many chances. I'll see what I can find out. You can call me here anytime. The switchboard will know where I am. I call you the minute I learn something. I'll be waiting for you. Well, that's some woman, no matter which way you look at her. She's got her own private war. And it won't matter to her how many peace treaties they sign, not as long as there's a Russian or a Nazi left. What's the matter, Rick? How would you like to go climb a tree? Rick's worried the Frau won't get hung. Colonel Van Dyke knows what I'm worried about. You mean you don't think she's true blue? I mean the woman's hooked on absinthe. And I wouldn't trust an absinthe drinker as far as I could throw that desk. So what's so bad about absinthe? To somebody that drinks air with nothing. But someday that stuff's going to hit her at the wrong time. She's going to goof off. You've been through all she's been through. You'd be looking for a little something to help you forget, too. Ever see that knife scar she's got on her neck? Yeah. Compliments of one of Mr. Hipper's boys. Too bad he was interrupted. Is there anything else, sir? Nothing else, thank you. Bloodthirsty little schnitzel, isn't she? She's really got a thing on hockey. You reckon the Frau will really be able to set up a connection? Don't ask me. I'll bet you something if she does. What's that? I bet they're gonna wanna do it at night. Do what at night? I don't care, don't make any difference. Talk English, will you? Those creeps over there. Don't they ever do anything in the daytime? Do burglars? Every single thing, no matter what it is, got to be done at night. You ever notice that? Life over here seems to be turning you into quite a philosopher. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, because if I lost one, I must have lost a dozen dolls on account of all this night work. There was one of them kids, a little fat one named Fritzy. I wouldn't have swapped for Mickey Mantle. Freddy! Rear gates. Come on in. Be with you in a second. Take this. Dear Senator, appreciate your interest and concern regarding Corporal John Leatherby and assure you every effort being exerted to find and return him to duty. 
Hobart. Department of State. That's all, thank you. This guy must know more senators than Harry Truman. What will you? I bring you the compliments of the commanding general. And I return them. And would the State Department be good enough to meet a VIP arriving this afternoon? Well, there goes my dinner, but okay. Who is it? Name of Mr. Charles Leatherby. Is this a gag? No, strictly official. But why'd they let him? What does he think he can do about it? Influence, dear boy. Now don't tell me that a member of the State Department has never heard of influence before. Is he really such a big shot? Plays golf. Oh. Leatherby? Yeah, that's right. I'm Fred Hobart from the State Department. Very glad to see you, sir. Any news yet? Not too much, I'm afraid. Anyhow, I had a wire from the secretary, and she assured me that everything's going to be all right. I haven't had any report from the office this afternoon. In other words, Hobart, the situation's the same as it was the night my boy was taken. In spite of everything we've been able to do, that's about it. I want to see the commanding general tonight. You can't see him tonight, I'm afraid. Why not? He's in rather a big huddle with the Russians tonight. About Johnny? Well, there's a bit more to it than Johnny, you understand. How do you mean? It's another big squeeze, apparently. We get them from time to time, you know. Yesterday, they held up traffic on the autobahns again, and this afternoon, they cut the phone service to East Germany. Anything they can think of to make nuisances of themselves. What do you think they want, really? Well, for one thing, they want us out of here. All right, so we get out. Maybe they'll take a fancy then to Toledo. Are you trying to be funny? Furthest from it, sir. I mean only that nothing that happens here is ever isolated. They kidnap a 19-year-old boy, your son. And we can't tell yet whether it's just a local needle or another career. Sure you fellas aren't being too melodramatic about the whole thing? No, sir, we're not sure. You may be, but we're not. Hello, Hoffy. How are you, Steve? You look just great. Thank you. Well, you certainly didn't waste any time. I was lucky. For all Lang Syne? All right. For all Lang Syne. It's okay. What's the pitch? They've got him all right. Who's got him? Would you mind not asking me questions? The person who told me I shouldn't like to get that person in trouble. Oh, well, that's all right with me, but how can we do business? Or can we? We can, but I'm afraid I have to be a little mysterious about it. I'm not asking anything else. You tell me. Well, it's a trade. What do you mean, a trade? It seems that they want somebody from the American sector. Two somebodies, in fact. And what they want to know is whether you'd be interested in hearing the rest of the proposition. You mean they want to swap the soldier for these... To somebody's? Apparently. Who are the people they want? That I don't know yet. How can I say whether I'd be interested or not? Maybe they want me and the general. No, not this time, anyway. They just want to know if you consider such a deal in principle. In principle, sure. I'll listen to anything in principle, just so long as it doesn't commit me to anything. Would you really consider such a deal? Well, what other choice have I? Such a shocking idea. Yeah, I know. They really kill me, these guys. There just ain't no bottom for them. But what else can I do? I've still got to get the soldier back. Then is that what you want me to tell them? 
We have to get started somewhere. When do you think you'll know something else? Tonight, perhaps. Well, I'll be ready any time. Shall I call you at your office? No, use that other number. How about the boy? Is he okay? I was told he is. Look. You're safe in this deal, aren't you? Perfectly. I was exactly what they were looking for. Someone in position to talk to both sides. Well, you don't have to be too brave, you know what I mean? Never fear. I've been through too much to take chances now. Well, I'll say this for you, kid. You certainly don't look it. You can't tell by that. It what's inside. Don't you ever relax anymore? You mean, am I in love again? No. Why not? I'm no good for that anymore, Steve. I just tried with you. It never actually worked. Not that you cared, one way or the other. Oh, no, just a minute. No, I know you, Steve. At least I was trying to be in love, trying very hard, in fact. But you, you couldn't have cared less, really. Honey, you got me all wrong. Why, even now... Let's not talk about it, will you? There was no feeling there then, and there is none now. I just haven't got it anymore. You think not? I know not. Well, may I remind you of something? I think I'd better be going now, Steve. Okay. But... Play it safe, will you? I'm all right, truly. You don't want another one of those so-and-sos whittling on your neck, you know? I'll call you later. Off it is in. Leatherby? Yeah, that's right. I'm Norman Lakeland of the UP. Well, how are you? And Freddie Hobart just phoned to say he'd be a few minutes late. Would you like to have a drink at the bar with us? Yeah, I'd like that. Good. Is this your first flight over? No, no, I've been over here quite a few times before. Very good. Do you have a nice flight? Very nice. No trouble at all. Well, this is Eddie Whitby of the AP, Mr. Charles Leatherby. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Leatherby? Sit down. Thank you, I will. What do you have? Uh, Manhattan cocktail? Yes, sir. Press club service, sir. Best bar in Berlin. Have a pleasant flight? Yeah, very nice, thank you. And now that you're here, what do you expect to be able to do? I'm not stupid enough to think that I can do anything. I'm here to make sure that somebody else does something. And you don't think that enough has been done yet? That's not exactly right. I'm sure the authorities feel they've done what is right, but... Well, look, you boys know as well as I do that the military can fall into a polite bureaucracy the same as the politicians can. Especially when the stake, as you might say, is only an enlisted man. To the military mind, the life of one enlisted man is probably not worth rocking the boat about. You understand what I mean? I think I do. Except that in this case, the enlisted man is not exactly a nobody. His father's a man of some influence and used to getting results. And the only way I know to get results is get in there myself and make sure they don't go to sleep on the job. Stir him up a bit. Yeah, you? yeah, that's it, exactly. Was that what you intend to say to Colonel Van Dyke? Who's Colonel Van Dyke? He's the cop on the case. Provo Marshal's office. Oh, if he's a man in charge, why not? I just wondering. I take it that this Van Dyke is something of a terror around here, hmm? He's very good at his job, I believe. Thank you. Look, gentlemen, I don't want you to be offended at this, but... Well, my guess is that you've allowed yourself to be pushed around by the military for so long now, you're starting to take them on their own imperial terms. Well, I don't. I've got four ex-colonels and an ex-brigadier general working for me in my business, and I'm no longer awed by military rank. I'm here to get some action. And if this Colonel Van Dyke is the man to get it out of, that's who I intend to get it out of. Well, you approach him in that way, and I don't imagine you'll have any difficulty getting it out of him. Rash is going against Boston tomorrow, I hear. Pass. Open. Steve! Come out. Mata Hari. Hoffy? Can I see you right away? Where are you? 
I think you'd better meet me at my flat. I'll be there in 15 minutes. At her apartment, did she say? I got a very funny feeling about this deal. What do you mean? I don't know how, but I can already see myself right in the middle of the flypaper. Another dirty one? Who cares about that? They want to swing low, I'll swing lower. They never saw the day they could teach an old pro football player anything about dirty pool. What is it? Well, I don't know yet. But what they've got in mind this time is a very, very nervous proposition. You scare me to death sometimes, Steve. <laughs> There's no use worrying about it. It's the new diplomacy. We just got to get used to it. Right now, I'm probably on my way to meet the official representative of a great sovereign power. And you know where? Right up a dark alley, just like Mickey Spillane. Will you be back? I don't know. Can't tell you. I often wonder what would happen if one of our soldier diplomats got tough with these people. Not phony tough, but real tough, the way I've had to be tough in my business on the way up. I wonder what would happen. Well, I don't know, but... It's an extremely interesting idea. You think they wouldn't show us a little more respect? You can bet your last dollar they would. Well, there's one of them sitting right over there now. Let's ask him. One what? Russian. In here? I'll go get him. Russian birth, he means. Actually, he's an American. He used to teach at Smith College. He's one of our liaison officers now. Mr. Leatherby, I'd like you to meet Mr. Petrushin. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Leatherby? Sit here, Petey. Thank you. May I offer you my sympathy, sir? Thanks, but I'd rather have a little more action around here. We're doing all we can, sir. Except that they're a little less cooperative than usual this time. Tell me, has anybody on our side ever actually spoken to a Russian about my boy? I have. What did they say? I spoke to Colonel Lodzhensky, the opposite number to Colonel Van Dyke, only last Monday. It's no secret now. Lodzhensky denied even having heard of the incident. And you let him get away with that? I had no power to alter what he had to say to me. Do you see what I mean? Mr. Petrochin, has anybody ever tried money on these people? Money? Money, cold, hard American dollars. Did you ever think about that when you were dealing with them? No, sir, I don't think I ever have. How about thinking about it right now? I'm not the richest man in the world, but I'm rich enough for a Russian colonel. Can you see him again? I suppose I could. How about trying it on him? Never mind the diplomatic notes and the red tape and the bowing and the scraping. Offer him whatever he wants that I've got in return for my boy. I'm sorry, Mr. Leatherby. But this is a situation where your money is not of the slightest importance. Where's Van Dyke? Second floor, room 203, sir. Thanks. I understand. I'll tell him just as soon as he wakes up. Bye. Ricky, this is Mr. Leatherby, Miss Cates, Colonel Van Dyke's secretary. How do you do? Oh, the Colonel's expecting us, I believe. That's right. Will you sit down for just a few minutes? Certainly. Did I understand you to say he was asleep? Yes, sir. And on a case last night? Till a couple of hours ago, but it won't be long now. Miss Cates, I'll tell him now. Is that fellow here yet? Yes, he's here with Mr. Hobart. Can you get rid of Freddy? I think I can. Get rid of him then. Send the other one in here. Yes, sir. Colonel says, can he see you later? That's all right, I understand. There's nothing more I can do anyway. Will you call me this afternoon? Yeah, I will. Good luck, sir. Thanks. Will you come in, sir? Mr. Charles Leatherby, Colonel. Mr. 
Leatherby, isn't it? It is. Mr. Charles Leatherby? Yes, that's right. Somebody sent for you? No. And what are you doing here? You know very well what I'm doing here, Colonel Van Dyke. Oh, yeah. I remember now. You're the guy that came over here to tell me how to do my job. No, that's not it at all. You're a big wheel in the axle grease business. So naturally, you're a big wheel any place else you want to poke your nose into. Colonel, if you'll be kind enough to let me explain my position here. Also, you're a personal friend of Senator uh, McDingle Hoffer, and you've got a letter to the commanding general. You're going to get a little action around here. Stir them up a bit. Get them off their big fat behinds. Isn't that it? Look, Why don't you stay home where you belong? Because I've got a boy in trouble over here, and I'm going to get him out of it. Do you understand that? How? How are you going to get him out of it? I have every right in the world to be here, Colonel. I'm a citizen and a taxpayer. A very big taxpayer, as a matter of That's fact. That's not what I asked you. You said you're going to get your boy out of this trouble, and I want to know how. I'm very interested in that. I warn you, Van Dyke, you've got no right to talk to me like this. All right, then I'll change the question. How do you think you're going to help him by coming over here and making a bloody nuisance out of yourself? Anything that burns me... It's an amateur trying to tell a pro how to do his job. I have no intention of telling you or anybody else over here how to do their oh, jobs. Oh, no, you're going to do it for me. You're going to buy the boy out of it. I heard all about that in front of a dozen people. You tackled one of my men and tried to take the matter out of my hands. You're going to do it for yourself. Cash and carry. Send him some dough. Dough fixes everything. Don't you know I could have you thrown in a jug for that? Trying to make a personal deal with a foreign government? That wasn't the idea at it all. It just so happens that this is not a cash and carry business, Mr. Leatherby. You're not dealing with the A and P now. These are cannibals, Mr. Leatherby. Head-hunting, bloodthirsty cannibals who are out to eat us up. Would you care for a drink? Yeah, I sure would. Have a chair. Thanks. Miss Cates? What is it? Root beer. No, thanks. Mr. Petrucin is here. Dee Dee. What about Colonel Lodzinski? You're right, Colonel. Something has happened. What it is, I haven't been able to find out yet. But he hasn't been in either his office or his home for three days now. There no talk? Very definitely no talk. Well, what about Nadia and the kids? No sign of anybody. The house is empty. I had the friend of mine look inside. Well, stay with it, will you? I intend to, sir. Tap every contact you've got. If you need any help, call me or Miss Cates, understand? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, hop to it. Good morning, sir. Good morning. They picked up another soldier? No, it's a Russian friend of mine. Lodajinsky. Isn't he the colonel you were dealing with about Johnny? That's right. The one who says he knows nothing about it? Well, that was his job. Those were his orders. And he's still a friend of yours? One of the best. In any case, let's get one thing settled anyway. Maybe we're not as emotionally involved as you and Mrs. Leatherby, but otherwise we want your boy back just as much as you do. Colonel, if I've been at all but tasty... the terms are going to be pretty stiff, Mr. Leatherby. You've heard something? What branch of the axle grease business are you in, anyway? Leatherby Products manufacture valves. You had much experience in swapping human beings? No. How does the idea appeal to you? I don't know what you mean. Well... There are a couple of Germans in this sector that the Russians want. They want them so badly, as a matter of fact, that they're willing to trade us Johnny for them. We deliver the Germans, they give us Johnny. How does a deal like that sound to you? If they're Germans and if they've done something wrong... Who well, said they've done anything wrong? Well, they must have. Otherwise, why would the Russians want them? In Toledo, Ohio, that would be a very shrewd observation. Over here, it's half-witted. They could be just as innocent as your son and still be wanted. Supposing, just for the sake of argument, that they were innocent... How would you feel about it then? I'd still want my son. What do you
you doing for dinner tonight? I have no plans. Will you eat with me? If you wish. All right, I'll meet you at the Catacombe restaurant at 8 o'clock. It's just off the slot, Strauss. Anybody can find it for you. The Colonel. Is my boy all right? As far as I know, they haven't laid a hand on him. Thanks. Miss Gates. Is she here? She's waiting now. You haven't been crying again, have you? No, sir. Not today. Well, maybe you won't have to anymore. Did you see that man who just went out of here? Yes. Well, that's Johnny's pop. He's a very big, powerful man with tremendous influence everywhere. He's just come all the way over here to help us out. Isn't that wonderful? That's the biggest break we've had. But I'm not going to tell you anything yet. Nothing at all until there's something definite. You understand? Yes, indeed, Colonel. So you just keep all this strictly under your hat, will you? Of course, sir. Just sit steady and I'll call you the minute I know something. Thank you so much, sir. It's okay, dear. Goodbye. Bye-bye. since the last... We had another boy, you know. Yeah, I know. He's killed towards the end of the war at the Battle of the Bulge. That's why we're so concerned about Johnny. Yep. Well, there's a lot of guys got it during the war. How do you like her? Like who? Thought you were looking at the piano player. No, no. That's a very attractive woman. Still not hard to take if you want to ask me. Where's the fella? Under that ape over there. All right. Jim? You mean the one with the dark glasses? Mm -hmm. It's her husband. What's the matter with him? Is he blind? Yeah. He's another one Mr. Hitler didn't like. Now she supports him, I suppose. That's it. That's the people I want for him. Want for whom? Johnny. I thought you meant men. So did I at first. That's the deal they want. We send them that broken down piano player and her blind husband. They send us Johnny, just like the Cubs and Phillies. Straight swap. No cash. Must be some kind of charges against them, aren't there? Oh, sure. They're charged with an unspecified crime, unquote. Are you able to get a look at their papers? Yes, sir. They're really buttes. No question about it. Oh, no, sir. They're fakes from way back. It's not that that means anything. If I had a dime for every set of phony papers in Berlin, I could be in the Axel Brief business myself. She must be just about your wife's age, isn't she? Yeah. Just about. How do you feel about it now? I'm not trying to grind you. You're a very smart cookie. And you're over here just to give us the benefit of your experience. So what I'd like to know is, how would you handle this proposition? Colonel, I'll tell you exactly how I feel. I don't care who they are or what they've done. Giving them to the Russians means getting Johnny back. That's it as far as I'm concerned. Rechts um die Ecke rum, rechts um die Ecke rum, überall ist Rosa. 
Are you through? All through, sir. Keep it as quiet as you can. Okay, sir. What are they doing now? Checking their papers, I suppose. That's the first thing she asked. Was it the Russians? Uh, I've been waiting for it, I guess. Where are they now? Downstairs, getting their night church. They live down there in some kind of a dungeon. I mean, there's a cellar under this cellar? Well, it's more like an old sewer. No windows or anything. That I'm it's calling you. Uh oh. <laughs> Do you think they got away? Not the way you mean, I'm afraid. Taking some kind of poison, sir. Both out cold. Call the hospital. Tell Dr. Foster to be ready when they get there. Tell him I need these people very much. Yes, sir. Come on, let me let's get out of here. What's the matter, pal? You look a little woozy. With us? So far, sir. Either of them say anything? No, sir. You got a cigarette? Yes, sir. Thanks. Light? Thanks. Look, I want a very quick report on these people. Quick as I can, sir. Where's the phone I can use, nursing? There's one right down here, sir. Miss Kate, Eddie. Yes, sir. Anybody using this room tonight, Mercy? I don't think so, sir. Well, then I am. Very well, sir. You want me to stay here, Colonel, or get out? You better stay. I'm afraid, because if those people conk off, we're out of business. Ricky? Yes, yes, sir. I'm at the hospital, room... Uh, 15, sir. Room 15. Now, look, those two people tried to duck out with some junk, and we've got to siphon them out. What about Hoffie? I've got to get a hold of her right away. I don't know, sir. I haven't heard from her since 8.30. I know, but she didn't call at nine. You want me to check around for her? Yeah, yeah, see what you can find out. I need her right away. That dame's banging away in the absence tonight. I'll shoot her straight through the head, so help me. Well, what are you doing here, Petey? I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, sir. All right, let's have it. Colonel Ojinsky's dead. How do you know? They had it on the radio over there. What'd they say? Brain hemorrhage. I'll bet. They say when? No, sir. Anything about his family? Going back to Moscow, they said. I'm very sorry, sir. Yeah, well, we all got to go sometime. I keep in touch with Ricky. Yeah, all right, thanks. Night, sir. What a break. He must have been quite a fellow. Hmm? What's that? This Lodachinsky, I said, must have been quite a fellow. Yeah, he was all right. Colonel, uh, do you need me right away? I just have to remember there's a fellow here who owes me some money, and I'd like to pick it up. So... Where is he, in the nurse's room? Well, sir, 
As it just so happens... Okay, okay. But don't get lost, will you? If this dame can't speak in English, you have to handle it for me. Thank you very, Dr. Shane, sir. I'll be right down home. The base is loaded. Mickey Mantle swings at the first pitch. It's a long drive. The sacks, three to two. Woodling scores, but Martin's striving to get home. His tag dot can... I think we can save her, but I don't know about him. He'll have to do better than that. I need them both. I'll try, of course. What was it, strychnine? As usual. Well, how soon can we talk to her? You can talk to her right now if you want. The man's delirious, but she makes sense, all right. Is she talking to English? Not to me, she didn't. My name's Foster, sir. Oh, Leatherby. Have you got a cigarette, sir? Eddie? Right here, sir. Single left, sending Woodling to second. Get your money? Uh, no, sir, not yet, sir. Now, look, the doc says we can talk to this woman now. Here's what I want you to tell her. Tell her first to take it easy. She's got nothing to worry about. You understand that? Yes, sir. Then tell her that we're not going to send her back to the Russians. I see, sir. Tell her that the Russians say they don't want her if they can talk to her husband for a little while. And that the husband's okay, and he's agreed to this if we can save her. You got that straight? Yes, sir. All right. Tell her that. Let's see what happens. Yes, sir. The husband keeps saying he's a general. General von Krautzenauer, son. Does that mean anything to you? I would think. Did you know his eyes had been gouged out? You mean removed? No, gouged out. Colonel... What are you going to do if one of them dies? I don't know. You think they'll take just one of them? There's no use asking me things like that. I don't even know whether this deal's on the level or not. Well, how can you make any plans at all? Who's making any plans? Look, mister, all I can figure to do with these buzzards is just keep punting and wait for a fumble. A bear I do. Struck out. It's too on. That's my barrel, all right. I think you better talk to this dame, Colonel. There's a gimmick here somewhere. How can I talk to her? I don't speak German. That's the gimmick. She's not German. She's English. Are you kidding? That's what she says. She wants to talk to somebody from British intelligence. Holy Moses. What else did she say? Nothing much. Just moaned when I told her her husband would have to go and put up his squawk for somebody English. That's all we needed from this goulash, a friend of the family. Did anybody else hear this? Yes, sir, Major Foster. He was there with me. Well, if this ain't a mess, I hope to kiss your uncle. You mean this might affect the situation, the fact that she's English? For well, one thing, it could affect my tail right out of the United States Army into a United States jail if it ever got out. So far, I'm as clean as a whistle on a couple of Germans with phony papers. But if the British ever got the idea that I'm using one of their ladies in a swap shop, they could blast me right into Leavenworth. Especially if she's dead. Listen, you jughead, you go tell Major Foster I say keep his big mouth shut, you understand? Yes, and you keep yours shut, too, if you don't want me to break your neck. Yes, sir, I understand. I knew it. I knew it right from the beginning, no matter which way you turn. Tango foot. you want me here, Colonel? Of course. That's what you're over here for, isn't it? To see that we handle things okay? I'm Colonel Van Dyke, madam. It's my duty to warn you that anything you say may be used against you. Do you understand that? I understand. But I want to see a British official from intelligence. Why? Because I'm English, English born. That's not what it says on your papers. I know, but I can explain all that. All right, then suppose you explain it to me. What do you want to know? Your name's not Schindler, is it? No. What is it? Cameron. Rachel Cameron. English? Yes. What's your husband's name? He's General Gerd von Kreschner. And when did you marry him? In 1931. Where were you during the war? With him. In Germany? Yes. Turned on your own country, eh? 
I stayed with my husband. And with the Nazis? No. He wasn't a Nazi, truly. I know, nobody was. I don't know how that rumor ever got started that there were Nazis in Germany. But he wasn't, I swear it. It was the Nazis that put out his eyes. Him and his men. For what? He was in the July plot against Hitler. And why didn't they kill him? They were going to, only... Only he got away when the Americans bombed the prison in Munich. I'm not really going to send him east, are you? I'm sorry, madam, but I'm here to ask questions, not to answer them. Is he alive? He's still alive. <laughs> now, one thing more now. Why do the Russians want you and your husband? <laughs> it's not the Russians. <laughs> it's him and his men. They're working for the Russians now. And they still want to kill us. Oh, why didn't you let us die? Why did you send us to them? Colonel. <laughs> Ricky on the phone, sir. She says it's important. Thank you. That's all right now. Kate's. I'm sorry to break in on you, but Lieutenant Colonel Stanways is here to see you. He says it's very important. Stanways? Who's he? That sandy-haired fellow from British Intelligence. British Intelligence? Holy Moses, what does he want? He didn't say, but he's very anxious to see you right away. Do you want me to send him over there? Look, you keep him away from here if you have to shoot him. You didn't tell him where I was, did you? Oh, no. It just occurred to me, wasn't he a friend of Colonel Lodogensky's? That's it. That's where I met him. Uh, you tell him to wait there. I'm coming right over. Get the briefcase, will you? Yes, sir. You stay here, Leatherby. I'll be right back. What about the man? Keep both of those people alive. Do you understand? Colonel. Yeah? I think I'll go back to my hotel. Oh, you do? Well, I'm not needed here, so I'll go back to my room and wait there. Choked up, huh? That's not it at all. What's the idea of bugging out? Well, I'm not needed here, so I thought you I might... You want your boy back, don't you? You know I do. Then you're not going anywhere. You're going to stay right here where you can see what it takes to get him back. Is that asking too much? No, of course not, but I thought I might as yeah, well... Yeah, I know. You were only thinking it's okay for us to play it dirty, but you don't even want to have to look at it. Well, you should have thought of that before you left Toledo. Look, Mr. Leatherby, I want you here when I get back. You understand? Right here. Where you can see what all those big, fat taxes of yours go for. Who's heading now? Yankee, 6-4, last half the eighth. Thanks. I used to think that guy was a little crazy. But I've changed my mind about that. He's big crazy. You wouldn't happen to have another cigarette on you, would you? Stancy, where have you been keeping yourself? Oh, here and there. Just got back this evening from a little holiday behind the Jolly Old Curtain. That's right. You speak that stuff, don't you? Enough to get the gin on Luddy. What happened? Of course, you know he's dead. Yeah, but how? Shot himself. After shooting Nadia and the children. They got something on him in Moscow, apparently. I don't know what it was. Perhaps you do. Oh. Anyway, on Tuesday, he had orders to pack up, family and all, and report back to Moscow immediately. Late that night, when the kids were asleep, he finished them off. Then Nadia. Then himself. It took him almost two years of wire pulling to get Nadia and the children out of Russia. So I heard. You know where he wanted to go? Paris, Texas. Odd choice, if I may say so. Well, during the war, he used to shuttle B-17s from Alaska. He and some fellow from Paris, Texas got to be buddies. So that's where he wanted to go. I had it all set for him, whole family. Leaving here tomorrow night. Yes, so I understood.
Anybody you know? No, who is it? Name of Stam. Lived in Liverpool before the war, worked for Himmler and the SS during the war, and now for the Ruskies. They're top rat, I believe. So? So that's who got the dope on poor old Lodi and turned him in. May I keep this? Yes, by all means. Might come in handy someday. I hope so. Well, I'm sorry to be the bearer of such bad news, Colonel, but I thought you'd want to hear it. Yes, he was a nice guy. Yes, one of the best. Well, good night. Good night. Oh, Stancy. Sir? You ever by any chance hear of a woman named Rachel Cameron? Crikey, where did you dig that one up? Who is she? Well, she's dead now, you know. Oh, is she? Yes, she and her husband both caught a packet during a raid on Munich. Oh, she lived here during the war. Well, there's no harm in telling you now, I suppose. She was an English woman, married to a German officer before the war and stuck with him when war broke out. But she used to send us bits of information from time to time. I remember reading a memorandum once... You don't know where I could get some more detailed information on her, do you? Oh, I doubt if there'd be any. We burned that sort of stuff pretty quickly, you know. Reports from informants who had to go on living here or had families here or anything. Why? Oh, name cropped up in a case. Just thought you might have heard of her. It was very attractive, I was told. Mm. Well, thanks very much. Not at all. <laughs> Cheer. All right. Excuse me, I wonder if you could tell me what it was I had in that little brown bottle in there. Root beer, sir. Curious sort of stuff, don't you think? Why didn't he yell? Let's go see. Take a look in that briefcase. See if those Lodajensky papers are still there. All here, sir. I was wondering when she could have got a crack at him. He turned in Lodi? Looks like it. Stanway says she did. Well, how could she? I don't get it. <clears throat> I've got a record on that woman from the day she was born. I've got every house she ever lived in, every move she ever made almost week by week, and it's as clean as a whistle. Absolutely airtight. Was it more than one copy of that stuff? Not identifying him, no. Did she ever come to your flat? Nope. Do you ever go to her? What a stoop. Well, that cooks the Leatherby deal, too, I guess. I'm terribly sorry, Steve. I'd have sworn on a stack of Bibles a mile high. Colonel Van Dyke's office. Yeah, he's right here, sir. Captain Petrosine, sir. Hello, Petey. Do you know where Frau Hofmeier is? No. Where? G2 picked her up. She's in Major Burns' office. Well, they got a nerve. What do they mean by picking up one of my people? I don't know anything else about it, sir. Just that they picked her up and took her down there. Across the street from the catacomba, around 8.30. Okay, Petey, thanks. <coughs> we got her upstairs. Rick, you go down and wait in the car. Petey, you come with me. We've got to get this deal rolling again. Well, you're not going to use her again, are you? What else can we do, kid? It's the only wheel in town. Just like I told you, too, remember? Nothing but night work with those cruds. What they need over there is a good, strong union. Come 
think of it. Maybe I could do with one of those myself. Where is he? Who is it? It's Van Dyke. Let me in. We had orders to pick her up, sir. Her name was on a Did list. Did she tell you she was working for me? Yes, sir. Well, don't you check a thing like that? Yes, sir, ordinarily. But I had my orders direct from Colonel Henderson. What was the list for? Interrogation. So what do you think Colonel Henderson would say if I picked up one of his people for interrogation? I don't know. Well, sir. I do. He'd blow his stack from here to Hoboken. And you know it. you have any objection if I talk to her for a few minutes alone? I suppose not, sir. You don't hurt me. It's all right, baby. It's all right. Nothing's going to happen to you. You will help me, won't you? Well, sure, I will. Come on over here now. Sit right down there. First, have they got anything on you? That I could. You've got my record. I fought the fascists. I fought the Reds. I risked my life. All right, then. Now, tell me this. What about these two people I got? What do I do with them now? That's what I was coming to tell you. They want to make the exchange tonight. Tonight? Who pulled that one? Some of them want to send him east. If we wait till tomorrow... They got the boy over there now? I understand they have him. Put them. If you can have the couple ready. Well, I could have one of them ready. What do you mean? Well, didn't you hear? They took strychnine. Oh, great mother in heaven. No. Yeah, the woman's still around, but the man may be a goner. What do you think they'll say to that? What a dreadful thing, those poor people. All right, honey, save it, will you? What I've got to know right now is whether we can still make the deal with just one of them. Do you know that? No, I had to ask about that. But how can I do anything, Steve? I can't get out of here. I'm scared, darling. I don't know what they mean. You've got to get me out of here, darling. You've just got to. All right. I'm going to get you out of here, all right. But first, just take it easy for a minute, will you, and listen to me? Go ahead, I'm listening. I want you to tell them something. Tell him that if the man's still alive, I'm going to deliver him both strictly as advertised. You got that? Yes. Otherwise, the best I can do is the woman. Will she be all right? Look, did you ever take strict man? No. Well, then you know as much as I do about whether she's going to be all right or not. All I'm saying is that if she is all right, I'll have her there. Is that clear? Yes, I understand. Now, get this. It's 11.30. I want this boy delivered to the hospital at 1 o'clock in an ambulance. I want it backed into that entrance where they take out the stiffs. They'll know the one I mean. Yes. The driver of the ambulance and whoever else is with him are not to get out of the front seat of the car at any time. They're not to set foot on West Berlin soil. And the transfer will be made entirely by our personnel. Is that clear? But who'll make the identifications? You will. You're going to handle the whole deal for both sides. Identifications, exchange, everything. And if they don't like that, you can tell them to go climb a tree with my compliments. Is that clear? I tell them, of course. All right. Maybe we're back in business. You mean I can go? What did I tell you? I'll never forget this, Steve. Thank you, darling. No more feelings, huh? I'm going to let her go, Major. It's entirely my responsibility. You can tell that to Colonel Henderson. Whatever you say, sir. All right, I'll be. You ever know me to pull rank on you before, Bernsey? No, sir. Well, then take my word for it. This time it was necessary. I got a little job for Frau Hoffmeyer tonight. Except that that isn't Frau Hoffmeyer. Who says it isn't? That's the dame that got rid of Frau Hoffmeyer and took her place. You know that scar on her neck? She did it herself. To fit the record. 
Because Frau Hofmeier had won. Colonel, you've fallen smack in your keister this time. Thanks a lot, Frenzy. I'll try to throw something nice your way sometime. Let's go, Eddie. This seems to be shaping up into quite a fancy situation, Colonel. If you figure it out, let me know, will you? And pretty unethical, too, if you ask me. Remember the last time they tried to give us a quick shuffle? What was the name of that guy, uh... Ploopski? 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 Hey, Colonel! Where's the old soldier? He's trapped in that dumb waiter again. I must be slowing down. That's my third round trip this week. Are we going to have to get dirty, too? Only in case of the tie. She doesn't show up. What can I do? Just keep putting, that's all. Get Foster and find out how those people are. Yes. Just get me through to Toledo, Ohio. I'll talk to anybody there. That's all I want. Hi, Freddy. I know there's a delay. Will you try it again and call me back? I'll be waiting at this number. You know a nurse here, don't you, that call your girl? Yes, sir. See if you can get me about 10 grains of this from her. What is it? Male hormones. Will you stop asking so many questions? Oh, look, make a note. Send three dozen red roses to Major Burns' wife tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Now, will you fellas mind clearing out of here for a little while? Well? I want to know what you're up to, Steve. Why? I don't care what you think of that government over there. You can't make any kind of a crooked deal with it. Who's dealing with any government? Aren't you? Now, look, Freddy, we asked them over there about Corporal Leatherby, didn't we? Yes. So what did they say? That they'd never heard of him, of course. So, all right, how can I be making a deal with a government that never even heard of him? You know very well that that's only their way of doing things. Not in my book. If a big, friendly power like the Russians tells me they never heard of Corporal Leatherby, that's good enough for me. Now, will you run along and let me get on with this job? Then whom are you dealing with? Now, look, Freddy, for Pete's sake, don't you think the Russians like a little piece of private enterprise as well as anybody else? As far as I'm concerned, I'm dealing with a small group of progressive businessmen over there. What I think you Americans call a mob. Now, is there anything wrong with that? Yes, sir. Well, how are they? The woman's coming around okay, but the man's on dead center. He might go either way. Look, Fred, win, lose, or draw, I'm going to play poker tonight. Now, why don't you run along over to the press hall and get the game started now? When I get there, I'll give you the complete rundown, so help me. Okay, Steve, but I'm warning you right now. If you blow up any trouble here, don't look for me to back you up. You understand? I know, I'm... No matter how you put it, there's absolutely no excuse, no justification for any such high-handed action. Unless, of course, you get the boy. Yeah? Colonel? Okay, what's the answer? It's all agreed to. Nice going, But they insist that they must have both of the people. Well, if they're still alive, they can have them. I already said that. But what if one of them dies? Is the deal off? I'm afraid I have to explain that part of it to you when I get there. Why aren't you alone? No. Well, listen, tell them I can't sit around here all night while they scratch their lousy heads over this thing. Either that ambulance is here by 1 o'clock or I'm going to the press hall and play poker. I understand. All right, then. Now, look, what time do you think you can get here? I'll try to be there by 12.30. Okay, see you then. Well, good night, Morris. You're right. This deal's getting trickier than a basket full of eels. Something new? Well, I can't tell yet. But get this. It's important. Yes, sir. Alert border control. There's going to be an East Zone ambulance on the line at Checkpoint Charlie between 12.30 and 12.45.
This ambulance is to be passed through the line without examination or delay of any kind. You got that? Yes, sir. Identification of personnel in the ambulance is to be waived completely and without qualification. Got it? Yes, sir. Then I want you to signal the MPs. Same alert along the route and tell them to buzz you the minute the ambulance passes. Okay, sir. At all, sir? No. I want you to get me a bottle of absinthe. Absinthe? Yeah. You think you can swing that? Well, I could try. It's a must. I gotta have it. Well, as it just so happens, I know a doll who oh, loves okay, that stuff. Okay, okay. Now then tell that sentry on the gig. When a woman named Hoffmeyer shows up, send her straight in here. That's it. Doc, I want you to tell me something in detail. All right? I want you to tell me exactly what it was that you did for those two people when we brought them in here tonight. What do you mean? The treatment. Busy? Well, yes, he is right now, sir. Anything I can do for you? I'd like to see him when he's free. Well, I'll tell him, sir. You know what he's going to do? Him and the foggiest, dear boy, sir. If he isn't committed for this one, I don't know a loony when I see one. Good. You never tasted? No, sir. I've been so busy with beer. You can have my part of it. Uh, Colonel. Yeah? I was just wondering, sir. Uh... Wondering what, Sergeant? Well, sir, the doll that I borrowed that from speaks so highly of it that... Uh... That what? Well, sir, I mean, she even cooks with it. Does she really? Well, what I was thinking, you kind of hate to have a doll that you're going around with no more than you do. Especially about important things. Like liquor. Okay, one swallow. That's all I want, sir. Just enough to make me sophisticated. Serves you right, you pig. But Dames must have some. Those Dames must have stomachs like emery wheels. You get that ambulance deal lined up all right? All set, sir. I'll get back on the phone and stay with it, will you? Okay, sir. Oh, I almost forgot, sir. Uh, the tycoon wants to talk to you. About what? I don't know. He didn't say, sir. But he's not looking too well. I don't think this waiting around is doing him any good. Tell him to come in here. Yes, sir. Go right in, sir. He's waiting for you. Thank you. money on you? I have. I mean American money. How much do you want? All you got. Oh, that's great. That's exactly what I need. I'll give it back to you if I can, but if we're lucky, you won't want it back. That doesn't matter. That's right. I forgot you're loaded. I take it that this woman's story has been checked. Enough of it. She's apparently what she says she is. If she and her husband go back, what do you think they'll really do to her? What do you care? I feel a responsibility towards him, that's all. Not four hours ago, sir, you expressed to me a total indifference to what happened to him. Your only concern, you told me, was for your son and your wife. I know more now than I did then. Well, kill him, I suppose. Torture him first, probably, and then kill him. They got her peg now, tipping off the British during the war, and this is just a little unfinished business they want to polish off. They're a methodical bunch of lights, you know. What time have you got? 
Hey, soldier, see if you can find my secretary, will you, Miss Cates? Ask anybody. Yes, sir. Colonel. What do you think they'll do to my boy? No idea. Sometimes they dope him up and run him through some kind of kangaroo court. Sometimes you just never hear anything more about him. Did they ever kill him? That I can't tell you. Why? What would you say if I told you I'd changed my mind about this whole business? What whole business? I feel we ought to let Johnny take his chances over there. I just can't send this woman back to what you say she's going back to. Are you sure you really know what you're saying? I do. And what about his mother? I'm sure that I speak for her, too. You live to be a hundred, Mr. Leatherby. You'll never do or say anything more becoming to you than that. But the truth is, your wishes have nothing to do with the matter. They never have had. These are decisions that have to be made by a soldier. Well, it's about time. Not easy to get. Wonderful. All I need now is coffee. You should have heard what I had to go through to get that stuff. What is it? Goofer dust. Are you nuts? It's okay. It tastes even better. Hospital, Colonel Valdyke. Okay, follow me. Ambulance just crossed the border, sir. Holy Moses, if that dame stands me up. Are you sure they're watching the gate? I'll tell them again, sir. ambulance my son is in? That's the one he's supposed to be in. Where are you from, Colonel? Huh? Oh, Wisconsin, a little town called Prairie du Chien. You never heard of it. I've heard of it. There's a college there, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Campion College, a little Catholic school. Used to have pretty good football teams there in my day, before all this two platoon stuff. May have them again now. Campion College, Toledo, Ohio. We're a long way from home tonight, Colonel. My name is Frau Hofmeyer. I have an appointment with Colonel Van Dyke. Straight down the road, miss, to the right. Thank you.
Van Dyke is waiting for you in room 15. Thank you. Come in. I thought Colonel Van Dyke was in here. He just went downstairs to check on the man. He'll be back in a moment. Will you be kind enough to go tell him I'm here? With pleasure. I thought something happened to you. No. But I'll be glad when it's over. Mm, won't we all? Everything okay over there? So they told me. Well, the ambulance has started already, you know. That's good. And the mayor's all right? Apparently, as far as they can tell, anyway. Oh, this whole thing makes me a little sick, Steve. I don't think I could do it again. Oh, well, forget it, baby. You did it in a good cause. Oh. Ambulance just rounded the far turn, sir. Hiya, Huffy. How are you? Get back on the phone, will you? Just left a minute ago, sir. Well, nothing left to do now then but wait, I guess. I suppose so. So, all right then. What are you doing later on tonight? Straight to bed. The minute this is over. I can't tell you how terrified I was. My idea was that you and I would step out afterwards and lift a couple. Oh, no. Steve. Just for you. Eddie got it from one of his dolls around here. Well, that's awfully sweet of him. But I don't think I could tonight, Steve. Not yet, anyway. Stop kidding. If we can't use a drink now, we never will. Well, just one, I suppose. None to bother. You know that Bernsey, he must be hitting the pipe these days. He's got me mixed up with somebody else. That's what I mean. He had a real dipsy doodle this time. That you were working both sides of the street. I know. He told me. Well, the trouble with those bubbleheads down there is to think that everybody's jerky but them. What did you tell him? You know that briefcase of mine? Yes. Well, when I showed Bernsey what I had in there about you, his eyeballs almost fell out. I got stuff in there about you that you probably don't even know yourself. I don't doubt it. I got you pegged within an inch of your life, kid. You know that? I'm sure you have. If I don't know you, honey, I don't know anybody. To all Lang Syne. You're a beast. But... What's the matter? Aren't you with me tonight? I don't think I'd better handle lot of it. Not even one? Just for a foundation. Not until we've got this done with. Come in. It's all right. She's with us. I'm sorry, sir, but the man checked out. You mean he's dead? Yes, sir. But you told me he was going to be all right. I thought he you was. You didn't say thought. You told me his heart was coming around and he was going to make it. Now, what did you butchers do to him? Look, Colonel, we gave him oxygen. I just gave him a dose of adrenaline. All right. Good. I'm sorry, sir. There it is. You heard it. Take it or leave it. I don't care. 
Is the woman all right? Would you like to go and feel her pulse? Please, Steve. You can if you want to. It won't be necessary. But I'm afraid I will have to see the man. But he's dead. That's what they told me to do. What's the point in that? I've got to, Steve, if I am to go on working with them. You know how suspicious they are. Yeah, oh, okay. Finish your drink. We'll go take a look at him. I'll have a go to it. But don't be a dope. You don't want to look at a stiff on an empty stomach, do you? I think I'd better. I don't feel so good anyway. Back in there. Don't you speak in English? Nein. You tell me that a follow his instructions or get this tank out of here. Bleiben Sie im Wagen. I'll talk to him. Mayor Nizeski? Yeah. Ich bin Frau Hofmeier, verstehen Sie? Yeah. Didn't she drink it? No, but I did. This thing is locked. Geben Sie mir den Schlüssel. I don't think he meant any harm. Just stupid. Open it up. Now, what do you think you're going to prove? May I talk to him first? Go ahead. What's your name? Can't you hear me? Yes, please. Then give me your name, please. Leatherby. Corporal John Leatherby. Seal number? Where's Rick? Will you give me your seal? In with a woman, sir. We'll tell her to get that bottle in there. Yes, sir. And get back here quick. Five, Can't you give me the pitch, sir? I'm not sure yet. It's beginning to look like a tie. Will you talk to him? That's all right. I'll see you when they bring her out. All right. Let's go check the man and get it over with. Where is he? If he's not in here, Foster will have to run up. I'm very sorry for this, Steve. Get me to Foster. Yes, sir.
You know what this is for, don't you? You got that bottle? Yes, sir. Pour a slug of it down, will you? Holy Moses, what happened? They won't fumble. The only thing you can do is steal the ball. Strap her down, will you? You are the darndest man. What about that escort? All set, sir. Just waiting for the whistle. All right, let her explain them apples to her buddies over there. Da kommt sie. Come on, Colonel, they're gone now. Please, Steve. Where's the woman? Here she is, right now. Take her down where her husband is, so we can wake up together. Yes, sir. Now, where are you going to do this, Sergeant? Right here, in surgery. Won't you please come in? Oh, Rick. Yes. Uh, call that kid Kathy, will you? I will. That's going to hurt much? No, Colonel. Okay, okay, but I can't stand much pain. Just a little poison. Final score? The Yanks took it in the tenth. Seven to six. Gonna have to break up that team yet. Excuse me, sir, but there's Mr. Leatherby who wants to see you. Where? The terrace. I'll be there in just a minute. Thank you, sir. Oh, I guess not. I'm out. You got a cigarette? No. Nope. Never carry them anymore. Only way to break yourself is a habit, they tell me. How many? Well, the whole family, huh? At ease, Corporal. Glad to see you on your feet again. Thank you, Morning, sir. Morning, Colonel. Morning. Well, Kathy, how do you feel now? I feel just fine now. Thank you, sir. How about you? No, I'm going to have to give up this game for a while. It's beginning to cut too much into my sleep. Well, I hated to break in on you, but my son has something he wants to say to you. With the Colonel's permission, Okay. Can you keep it short? Well, all I wanted to say, sir, was... Well, my father told me what all you did for us, and... Well, it meant a lot to all the men. It meant a lot to oh, all I of us. I think that to... just about covers it, Corporal. You don't have to spread yourself. While we're about it, I think I ought to tell you that your old man pulled one last night, too. A little decision. Right from here. It was really big league stuff. So I have to take my word for it, because neither of us is ever going to mention it again. Is that right? You're in charge, Colonel. Oh, really? Well, that's finally clear. Maybe I'll keep my nose out of the axle grease business. Well, goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye, sir. And good luck Thanks again. Anything else I can do for you? No, you've done about everything. Thank you, Colonel. Well, if you lose him again, call me. Well, goodbye, honey. Good luck. Goodbye, Colonel. Best to you. Thank you, sir. See you in Toledo. We interrupt this program for an announcement from American military headquarters here. 
The return of Corporal John J. Leatherby of Toledo, Ohio, who was picked up by the Russians ten days ago, has been affected through regular channels. The promptness with which the Russians responded to diplomatic conversations is interpreted by many here as still further indication that they are now genuinely anxious for the resumption of normal, peaceful relations with the Western powers. 